Hey guys, so the movie I'm going to talk about today is Seven Years in Tibet. It's a film from 1997 starring Brad Pitt, uh, David Thewlis, and others, I'm sure, uh, such as Mako, or Mako rather, and uh, B.D. Wong. Now, the film, <laughs> it, I actually saw this film for the first time this year on the plane, and um, it's a film that caught my eye because I remember a friend of mine telling me it was good. I remember a friend of mine years and years ago telling me, hey, I really love this movie. It's got a really cool soundtrack. You know, I think the music is by John Williams. Um, and, you know, I mean, it was a girl, so she was like, oh, Brad Pitt, so dreamy in it. And I was just like, all right, whatever. I never watched it until recently. And I was like, oh, you know, this movie looks like an Oscar bait kind of movie. But maybe it's actually one of these like kind of... Oscar bait movies that didn't get any Oscars, but was actually quite good, you know? Uh, so I thought, you know what? I'll watch it. So I don't I don't die dumb, not knowing anything about this movie. And I sat there and watched this whole movie. And I had many, many questions. Um, to give you an idea, what is this movie about, Seven Years in Tibet? It's about this Austrian Nazi uh, who, around the time of World War II, goes mountaineering in India... And then he becomes caught and he's imprisoned for a while and then escapes, ends up going to Tibet, okay, where he learns the, the, the kind of ways of the Dalai Lama and the people there. And then later on, um, the war, you know, kind of with China uh, begins. So um, my main question uh, when I was done watching this movie is what is this movie about? Because I just gave you the synopsis, okay? That's just the synopsis. But what is this movie actually about? Like, what is the point of this movie? Uh, I couldn't figure it out. Because this movie is all over the place. And it is... Um, when you know that it actually is based on a book that's an autobiographical account by someone, that changes things quite a bit, like, of your perception of this movie. Because when you're watching it, I'll be honest, I'll give you the review right now. This movie sucks. This is a bad movie. Seven Years in Tibet is a bad... It's just a flat-out bad movie. Uh, it's dull. The acting's not particularly good in it. Uh, and the writing is just a big que a big old question mark, okay? Oh, sure, it looks nice. It's nice visuals, I guess. Um, that's really it. And nice music by uh, John Williams. But my main question is, what what is the point? What is this movie about? Is it about... This movie could have been about so many things and it tries to do everything and it just doesn't work because this movie's not really about anything, you know. It could have been about a Nazi guy who becomes a prisoner and through his imprisonment and his journey to Tibet, you know, learns some, you know, valuable life lessons and stops being a Nazi, rejects the whole ideology and tries to make amends for the hurt that he's caused, you know, the guilt that he has, etc. Movie's not about that. The the whole Nazi thing is is just kind of swept under the rug really early on and is barely implied throughout the whole movie, completely given up. The whole movie is divorced completely from that very important and interesting fact that the main character you're watching is a freaking Nazi. And a real person, by the way, because this is based on an autobiographical account. So what you're watching is essentially some Nazi guy wrote a book about going to Tibet. And then the movie is just based on that. But he tries to hide the fact that this is what you're watching. It's kind of weird. It's kind, This movie is kind of weird. Uh, so it could have been about that. It could have been about some Nazi guy who stops being a Nazi because the Dalai Lama opened his eyes to um, just just how bad that is. Um, it's not about that. It could be about a guy's friendship with, like a, a Nazi guy's friendship with some nice guy who makes him basically stop being a Nazi later on, etc. Through the kindness that he... No, it's not about that. Uh, this kind of a love triangle at one point. Yeah, it's not about that. Uh, it could be about the war between uh, Tibet and and uh, China, 
and Nazis' involvement in that, if there was any. Not really about that. The the kind of China versus Tibet conflict happens later in the movie, and it really feels like it's really badly done, by the way. Like, the whole thing about, like, the portrayal of the generals is so cartoonish. And the, when you read about the actual story of what happened, everything's kind of out of sequence in the events depicted in the film. So it's not even accurate. Like, it's not even good. And then Brad Pitt just feels really kind of like, you wonder, like, why is that character still here by that point? So you've got, like, a whole bunch of movies here that could have, each of them could have been about something. And they tried to do all of it in this movie. And what you're left with is a really, really boring, messy, um, horribly acted and written movie. And it's a shame. It's a shame because you had some nice visuals. You had, you had some potential here. Uh, but man, from the moment where Brad Pitt opens his mouth and it's this horrible Austrian accent, um, cartoonish. It's like if you are talking like this. It's, it's horrible. It's absolutely, it's a horrible performance. Uh, I haven't checked. I wouldn't be surprised if Brad Pitt was nominated for a Raspberry Award, like a Razzie, um, back in the day for that performance. Because that is a rough one. That is a rough performance. Really not good. Um, there's some good performances in this movie. You know, like um, Mako is good. Uh, B.D. Wong is good. Um, the girl in it is good. I forget her name. Um... The little kid who plays the Dalai Lama is very good. Um, David Thewlis is always good. I mean, I, I can't think of a time where he wasn't good. He's very, very good. Um, I actually remember, I think Roger Ebert was saying at the time that they should have switched the roles, really, where David Thewlis is actually the main role, um, which actually kind of makes sense. I, I, would, I could see that. I could actually see that. Better still, just don't make this movie. Because there's, there's really, like... I didn't find myself emotionally invested in anything that was going on. I kept waiting and hoping that this movie was going somewhere. And it really isn't, you know? Like, is this movie about the friendship um, of this, this Nazi guy with the Dalai Lama? And how it's kind of like a problematic thing? No. No, they're just kind of pals for a while. And then he has to go. And then... What? And then he has, like, this divorce thing with his wife. And he's never seen his kid. And he goes back to see his kid. And she's okay with it, I guess. Uh, by the end of the film. Um, David Thewlis' character is, is... Nothing happens. Nothing happens to these characters. That's interesting. And this could have been so interesting. I... I would have divorced... Because they changed so much in this movie from the book and from the actual history of it all. I would have divorced this entire story from, uh, from that shitty book. I, I, I haven't read this book. I don't care. It doesn't sound particularly interesting. I would have divorced the movie completely from that book. Done something kind of to that effect, I guess. Just don't have him be... You can have the guy be a Nazi or not. It's pretty much irrelevant in this movie anyway. So you might as well not have him, you know, be a Nazi. Just have him be like some American soldier who's kind of a douchebag. And then finds himself in Tibet. Uh, I would have started the whole, like, conflict between China and Tibet, like, way earlier. Uh, and I would have had the girl in the love triangle. Or maybe the guy who's not Brad Pitt, die. I would have had that guy die. Um, or her. For dramatic effect, just to have some kind of drama in this freaking boring-ass movie. Um, and, yeah. And then just kind of, like, have the friendship between uh, the guy, if he is a Nazi, get more and more and more strained with the Dalai Lama, who kind of, like, learns more about the history of what these guys are doing and disagrees, you know, you could have done something there. Or if he's just an American soldier, uh, just have him be like a really, really, like a really, really bad guy. And uh, just very slowly kind of change his personality. Um, and Brad Pitt would have had an easier time with that, even though he's not a very good actor. He would have had an easier time with that because he wouldn't have had to do this stupid accent the whole time. So, oh man. Um, this movie was rough. This was a rough one. Uh, I do not recommend you watch this movie. I was severely 
um, disappointed. Uh, I thought the movie was at least going to be this kind of like sweeping epic where you've got these mind-blowing visuals and performances, and I did not get any of that. Uh, the film looks nice. It looks fine. Um, some good performances in there, but it, overall, this was a damp fucking towel. Uh, just, a, just a bad movie, and it's, it's the kind of Oscar bait movie like that completely, that completely shits the bed. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of stuff like Pearl Harbor or uh, Captain Corelli's Mandolin, which was this is actually Captain Corelli's Mandolin is a pretty good comparison, I think, because you also have a main actor doing a horrible, horrible, <laughs> cartoonish foreign accent uh, that is not convincing in the slightest. Uh, you've got this kind of forced kind of... Um, Forced drama on you, which is not actually that dram dramatic, um, and uh, it's. I want to at least Pearl Harbor. I feel like Pearl Harbor was a better movie than this, and this is shocking. At least Pearl Harbor had attempts at comedy, and attempts at like action sequences. You know, there was some drama there. There was a love triangle. There was an actual love triangle. Um, it was ridiculous. It's not a good movie. I mean, Captain Corelli's, uh, you know, Pearl Harbor and this movie are all quite bad. I feel like Pearl Harbor, from an ent purely from an entertain mindless entertainment standpoint, uh, there was more to look at in that movie. You had Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, you had Jennifer Garner in there, I believe. Uh, you know, you had something there. Uh, same thing with Captain Corelli's Mandolin. You know, you I mean, you had a solid cast. You had Nicolas Cage hamming it up. Just ha Nicolas Cage can make anything watchable. And this was kind of one of his more ridiculous, uh, serious performances, in my opinion. You had Penelope Cruz as well, uh, who is good, always good value. Uh, not so much in that movie, but, you know, most of the time. Um, you got some entertainment value there. This movie, Brad Pitt is boring as hell. And his cartoonish accent... It just, it's not even fun. It's not, like, fun cartoonish. Like, at least make, at least give us, like, 12 monkeys, Brad Pitt. I don't know. What we got was Meet Joe Black, um, Brad Pitt, with a goofy accent, which is just, frankly, annoying. Um, so I, I can't, in good conscience, recommend this movie. This is an entirely skippable movie. And it's, um, you're not going to learn anything from this movie. You're not going to really have... You know, the film's not going to pull at your heartstrings at all. Um, and it's not anything. It's just it's just kind of a waste. It's kind of a waste of money. And the shocking part of it is that this movie did okay when it was released. Like, I'm pretty sure it made pretty much double his money back or something close to that. So, yeah. It didn't get any Oscars, but I feel like it got, like, Golden Globes. Or something. It got something. And I'm just like, wow, this was this was bad. This was bad. Even for a movie that I will sit and watch on the plane, that was bad. I, you know what? Like, I was on the plane after that, and someone, like, in a different, you know, seat was watching Aquaman. And just watching them watch Aquaman without the sound on was so much better. So much better than just sitting there miserably waiting for something to happen um, with any meaning to it whatsoever in seven years in Tibet. Um with the sound on, so that tells you something. This really felt like seven years long, this movie. It's a long movie, but it's not that long. But man, it feels... Oh, man. I would say, if you want the, the kind of experience that this movie is going for, watch Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence instead. Oh, my God. It's basically this movie just done a hundred times better. Like, it's what this movie wants to be. This movie wants to be... Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, and fails completely because in Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, you've got some gorgeous visuals and cinematography. You've got a really, really good performance by David Bowie. Stunning, stunning soundtrack by um, Sakamoto. And then you've got this like, this really, really kind of abstract scenes that really make you think and... Um, 
you know, there, there's some deep meanings in there. You know what the movie's about. It's got some layers to it. It's got freaking Takeshi Kitano kicking ass. Just a really, really good movie. So please, for the love of God, skip seven years in Tibet and go watch Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Really, really good movie. Wor well worth it. Well worth it. It's about David Bowie's this prisoner of war, uh, British prisoner of war, and about him, you know, having to deal with the... Uh, the Japanese soldiers, etc., and um, the bad stuff that happens in that prison, and him trying to escape, yada yada yada. Flashback to his past, etc. It's it's just a very interesting movie, which this is not. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, I enjoyed talking very briefly about it. I don't want to think about this movie anymore. So and now I can finally just like raise my brain from whatever that was. See you guys later.